the title of this uh, presentation is Upgrading Basically Obsolete RTUs. And I guess many of you attended this morning Larry's presentation. We had a good laughter there. And he told everybody about the year of 2020, how bad that year was for practically many, many individuals, including him and his wife, losing the jobs and everything else. I just want to share that 2020, in my 22 years with ACS, was the best year ever as far as booking RTUs. You know, I didn't travel, of course, I was grounded like everybody else, but through the relationships and through the means of <clears throat> knowing so many of you, we managed to book that year more than any other year RTUs. And many of those uh, upgrades were, of course, obsolete upgrades, but also new RTUs. And what's, what's about this whole upgrade of obsolete RTUs? It's anything but preserving the existing installation. Utilities have spent millions in implementing and installing RTUs, and they kept them for way beyond their useful life. Some of them that we encounter have been in operation for 40 years. You know, an RTU, like a computer, should be 10 years max. And if they are still 40 years later in operation and mission critical type of, of operation, you can imagine the risks associated with operating such equipment. I'll share with you a little bit our experience, and then we'll go specifically with a use case that SRP will present to you. So, most of you know, because we are customers of ours, but we also have some uh, folks that come from other countries. So, just quickly, ACS, before we were part of Indra, was founded in 1975. We are based in Atlanta. Everything is done in Atlanta as far as the RTUs are concerned. The design, the development, the manufacturing, practically the support, everything is done in Atlanta. So 47 years since 1975, this group had been basically supporting the RTU business throughout the country and also the world. Not only RTUs, but as you probably see and hear throughout this conference today, ACS or Minside ACS is involved in many other uh, sectors such as OMS, DMS, ADMS, and of course all the IT solutions that now Indra and Minside is bringing to the table. Specifically on the RTU side, and in a moment I'll show you a much larger screen on that subject, we do excel not only in new RTUs but in upgrading obsolete RTUs. And just to mention a few, we have a category that's called the centralized. Our own RTUs are also centralized RTUs. Those are RTUs that are all mounted and placed in one cabinet. But you also have RTUs that are referred to as distributed architecture. The GEs and the Telegear 5700 are of distributed architecture. In other words, you can put part of the RTU in one location and another part further away. And sometimes further away can be miles away or in the substation in another control center, in another control house, etc. With regard to the centralized, you can see some of the names here. Those are all companies that most of them, some of it, all of them on this list here are by now obsolete. We refer to them affectionately as orphaned RTUs, no longer in existence and we do upgrade those. What are some of the market drivers that prompt companies throughout the country and the world to upgrade RTUs? So first of all, the grid modernization initiative is one of them. The fact that legacy protocols are no longer either supported or effective. There are need for other type of protocols, such as the DNP or the 61A50 that everybody talks about. Those are some drivers. The fact that cybersecurity is becoming a major uh, concern throughout the industry, those are some. Uh, the fact that the analog communication lines are either obsolete or those that still have them pay an arm and a leg to maintain them. 
fact is that those companies are now obsolete. As such, you don't get spare parts, you again don't get support. All these are some contributors to market drivers to upgrade existing obsolete RTUs. The fact that experts that knew how to maintain those RTUs are retiring or have retired. The young generation, the new folks, never get the training, have really hard times to adapt to this particular installation, and those are mission critical type equipment. So go and figure out when something happens. As long as it works, fine, but when a problem occurs, then people struggle. The configuration software in some of the cases are horrendous, are very difficult as compared to existing current RTU configuration. And the support is either non-existence or very poor. So with all those market drivers, where are we posi positioned in order to accommodate those? So first of all, we are strategically committed, both Madrid and Atlanta. When Indra bought us, they knew very little about the RTUs. They knew that we are a system type support provider, not only support, but product solution provider. But the RTUs came in as a byproduct of their acquisition. To date, and I'm being approached now by Brazil and by, by Chile and by Mexico and you name it, you know. Uh, I guess people are realizing that we have something to offer that is unique and of value. We are shovel ready. Everything that I'll be showing you today and here today is not we can do, we may be able to do. We are ready to do it now. Cybersecurity wise, same thing. Our equipment are adhering to the requirements of the cybersecurity requirements. We offer a 10 year warranty on anything that we basically provide. I already mentioned that we are designing and developing, manufacturing the equipment in Atlanta. The protocols that we support, and that's a short list of course, are DNP, Modbus, and now also 61 and 50. It's very easy and simple, it's almost intuitive to program our RTUs as compared to others. Needless to say, we have here in the room Jim Edwards, he's our main trainer, and yes, it requires some training, nothing happens on its own, but it is relatively simple to use. And the support is second to none. Many of you know that since you are a customer of ours, so you know how we support our equipment. This is the long list. I'm not going to go throughout all the stories here, but a few. Down here, you see Chrysler. Believe it or not, Chrysler, the car industry or the car manufacturer, used to manufacture RTUs. We also have upgrade and we are still upgrading those RTUs to date, which is unbelievable when you think about it. And when you see those RTUs, it makes you wonder why customers still want to upgrade rather than replace them. And there are reasons for it. I mean, it's, it's very risky, it's very complex, it's very costly, it's very time consuming. And I just mentioned the value proposition that we are basically offering here. Cost, time, and risk reduction. Over here on the bottom, you see a very long list. And that long list is all related to the GED20 type RTUs. And that's relatively a new solution that we brought to the table. And look how many are there. In a moment I'll show you the playing ground, the playing field. Those are some logos of our customers in that space, in that field of the RTUs. This is not systems, this is RTUs specifically here. You know. And I apologize if I don't have everybody here, not here and not on the map. I keep on getting the question, why are we not listed here? <laughs> You know, but uh, if we were to list everybody on this map, then we won't see a map. We just see stars and, uh, right? Uh, and what's so immediately observant or obvious in this list here are the yellow stars. Those yellow stars all represent companies that until not long ago were all GE customers. And they all opted to change and come on board with us concerning the upgrade of their peripherals primarily. Now, not all of you understand or know how the GE is uh, built or the architecture itself, but just keep in mind that they have peripherals, the IOs, and they have the RTUs. 
And these are primarily peripheral upgrades rather than just the R2 on the peripherals, you know. Some other colors are the purple ones. So it's not purple heart, but it's a purple star. And those are referring, are referred to as the Telegear 5700, which is the G, uh, Siemens product. And then the other stars are most likely also related to your installations. Those are ACS RTUs, not related to an upgrade of another type RTU. So you can see companies like Entergy here, 1,600 GED20 installations, just to give you an idea. National Grid, which is a relatively newcomer on board, hundreds, five, 600 of those. NV Energy, and we have a representative of NV Energy in the room here as well. They have all of the above. GEs and Telegears and uh, System Northwest and the list goes on and on and of course New York as well, you know. So you can see that we have a nice mix of customers throughout and some of the utilities are by all means the envy of my competitors. They would love to have a foot in the door with those utilities as well. So we are very fortunate and blessed and, and, and lucky to have them but we operate very closely together. And part of the reason they are here is because they believe and support our solutions here. What am I doing on times? I have one minute. Quickly here, notice this number here. Over 5,000 of those peripherals were already delivered as far as the GE is concerned. The blue are our current platform. It's our current platform. It's called the NTX. And to date, we delivered close to 28,000 RTUs from the early days in 1975 all the way to current days. And this is dated August, <coughs> so it's just recently, you know. Just to show you, and of course, many of you stopped by and thank you for stopping by. That's our uh, demo rack here with the RTUs, with the Telegear 5700 upgrade, with the GE, and some of the interposing relays. Those are the products themselves. And you can see from smaller ones, by the way, those that sat in Jim's uh, class this Monday, they saw all this information in greater details. I'm just quickly uh, giving you an overview. Those are the GED20 peripherals, all four of them. We have them nicely presented in the showcase area. And now is the most important things. That's this evidence of the crimes, you know. So here's NV Energy. And this was one of their first installation, you know, called the microwave substation. And you can see the old smile, meaning they were happy after the installation here. So that was a very small installation in the back here outdoors. And by the way, I was asked today if our RTUs uh, basically can handle hot temperatures. So you can see this is now Las Vegas and obviously it's a little bit hot there, you know. This is another big installation that we did last year. And again, it was the end of this installation. And uh, I know that uh, although I offered to Alvin to help us out up here, he refused. Now he is here in presence and also on the screen, you know. He cannot get away, right? <laughs> um, Entergy is one of the largest of our customers, mainly, as I say, 1,600. And you can see again some folks down here with smiles on their faces, factory visits when they first got us uh, you know, on board. And here's really the secret behind our success. That's the team, the RTU team at ACS. You know, so on the left side, you have the R&D folks with Joe Boyke and his folks here. Everybody smiles, everybody's happy. Here's Jim in presence. On the right side, important to mention, Yes, he's retired, not. And what I mean here is that although 44 years after he finally decided to retire, he's still on a retainer with us and he still offers every so often assistance, either directly to the customers that call him or to us when we need some assistance. So, you know, in the RTO field, we cannot basically hang up and, and move away, you know. And I'm done, so thank you and Nick. I'm about half a minute behind schedule, right? Thanks, Ari. Thank you. Let's see if I can get the... Oh, 
What is going on here? Is it touch screen? No. And laptop. Is it locked up? Yeah, looks like it's locked up. Um, am I just blind? Here. Yeah, it does appear to be locked up. What'd you do, Ari? Nothing. You I said I'm done. My I'm done. Presentation? I said I'm done, you know. <laughs> I noticed I was a half a minute behind schedule, you know. <laughs> uh, well, in, while he's doing that, I can go over the history of our company, which is the slides I was going to try and blow through anyways. Um, my name's Nick Summers. I work with Salt River Project. I work in the SCADA engineering group there. We're a power company in Phoenix, Arizona. We primarily serve the greater Phoenix area, along with APS, our rival that did not make it to present, I'd like to point out. Uh, um, we are a company that does generation, transmission, and distribution. So we do uh, everything from generation on down to the customer. And um, the, it'd be nice to have the slide up there, but I'll just go through real quick our RTU history. We started in the mid-90s uh, at SRP, replace, um, putting in GE D20s and GE D200s. And these were the RTUs we installed for the next you know, 20 plus, 25 years. Um, those replaced some old CDC uh, 8890s and 4450s. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, and then in about 2018, we underwent a process to select new RTUs and new peripherals to replace those GE uh, RTUs and peripherals. And, oh, this will work. Uh, no, that's not. That's the, the end of mine. Open. Yeah, that's the end of his. Oh, perfect. Should be open already, I think, uh, down here. Upgrading. Right there. This one? Yeah. Okay. It unlocked itself. That's good. Great. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> now let me zoom forward. So, uh, in 2018, we started the process. In 2019, we actually started installing Orion LX Pluses and ACSIO. Uh, all of our substations at SRP have fiber connection to them, so everything communicates with our EMS DMP IP. We have approximately 410 RTUs split up between transmission, distribution, generation, as well as automation. So I'm going to skip over a couple of these, just talking about our different standards. But we have thousands of GE D20 peripherals that we have to replace. So when we were considering who we are going to go with to replace these, we chose ACS for a number of reasons. Um, the software, the NTX Explorer, I'm sure you guys know that software. It's very simple to use. It has advanced features. Um, the product that we were selecting had already been implemented by other companies in the industry, so we weren't going to be a guinea pig for a new product. But the real reason we selected them was the two middle bullet points, the interfacing with our existing field wiring. We had a lot of hardwired alarms and controls and analogs that we didn't want to redo that rewiring when we were upgrading these sites. And the NTX U20s, they just go right into the West terms that are the GE D20 West terms. So we didn't have to do any rewiring in a lot of instances. And they exactly match the form factor of the IO that they're replacing. And then they allow us to do DMP IP communication to the peripherals. I'm sure you guys are aware the GE uh, D20 peripherals, they speak their own D.20 protocol. So you have to upgrade them if you want to communicate with an RTU that's not a GE RTU. Also, the environmental ratings, as Ari pointed out, um, you know, Phoenix in the summertime is also pretty hot. We put these things out in our switch gear, so they have to be able to handle those temperatures. And we've never had any problems with that. And we also use a couple of the fiber connected options. So over the past almost four years, we've now installed almost, probably more, well more than 300 by now, uh, mostly U20D peripherals. Um, but we do have D peripherals, we have uh, K peripherals, A peripherals, as well as combo peripherals. One of the things that we did when we started installing these, and this 
turned out to be uh, really beneficial on our part is we created template configurations for each of the peripheral types. So we don't actually have unique configurations per peripheral. We instead have a U20D template, a U20K template, a U20A template. And the only thing that we change about that template is the device that we're downloading it to has unique IP and DMP properties. So that way, we don't have to save thousands of files someday because we're going to have thousands of these peripherals in our system. We just have to have our four template configs. And our technicians go in the field. They have a few steps that they know how to do where they download the configuration. They change the IP and DMP settings for that device. They connect it to our RADIUS server. And that's it. We don't bother downloading the configuration or saving it anywhere. It's just a template with a couple couple tweaks to it. And that's really been beneficial for us. Reduces complexity as well, but the main thing is we don't need to worry about file retention there. Here's a uh, little before and after photo for one of our installations on the left-hand side. Does this work? Yeah, it kind of works, yeah. On the left-hand side, you can see the GE D20 peripherals on this I.O. rack we had in the substation. The right-hand side, we've replaced those with the NTX U20 peripherals. We didn't have to change any of this wiring out. All we did was install these, add Ethernet connections to them, and we're able to communicate to them. Here's another before and after photo of an installation where we did an R2 upgrade and an IO upgrade. Right here, you see the GE D20 peripherals. On this rack, we've replaced them with the NTX peripherals. Actually, this rack here has peripherals on both the front and the back of the rack, and they're both flush mounted to both sides. So that's why it's really important that the peripherals we chose would be able to um, allow us to mount their I.O. on both sides of a rack. So the form factor was really important for us. Here's another example um, of a K peripheral installation. These are the GE D20Ks, required two GE D20Ks at this site to power eight KI peripherals. When we replaced it, we only needed a single U20K peripheral because they can support 128 uh, trip closed pairs. So we have eight KI peripherals all being controlled from a single U20K. How am I doing on time? Almost out. Um, we've had over the last three years, we've had some challenges installing these, and ACS has walked through those challenges with us. They've provided a lot of solutions for us. Um, I'll mention a couple of the important ones. Um, the U20Ks are not always a direct replacement for the D20Ks. I just did want to mention that. Only in the instance where you have controls hardwired to the D20K Western, you have to instead install a U20KR adapter to hardwire those controls to. Um, but a lot of our sites, especially all of our transmission, didn't have that, so that was not an issue. Um, when updating the firmware, it does delete the configuration that's on the device. So you need to make sure if you have a unique configuration to save that before updating the firmware. The software is easy to use, as mentioned, but just make sure all of your employees are using the same version of the software. If somebody updates to the newest version and creates a configuration and the other people don't have the same version, it can cause issues. Um, we connect all of our U20 peripherals to the RADIUS servers uh, that we have at SRP. And that's actually a great feature of the NTX peripherals. So when you're logging in, you use your own credentials that authenticate with a RADIUS server. Uh, the issue we had was when you download a configuration, you had to deactivate RADIUS before doing that. They fixed that issue. Now you don't have to deactivate RADIUS to download a configuration. And also, activating and deactivating radius sometimes just wouldn't work. You'd have to try it again. And they also fixed that with the newest firmware. Looking forward, uh, SRP is looking for a fleet management solution. We're really looking for a software that will help us do um, a number of things. But some of those are remote firmware updates on multiple devices at once. So you can push out firmware to a whole set of devices and update them. Uh, we also would like a software to go out and back up configurations for us on like a routine basis. And we're also looking at using DMP secure authentication. And right now we're looking at that between our EMS substation and the RTUs. But it would also be nice to look at that from our RTU communicating to our network connected devices, such as the ACS peripherals. 
Um, but right now, we've got that on hold because we're waiting for the newest version of DMPSA, version 6, to actually be released before we look further at that. And with that, I think we're only a couple minutes over. Are there any questions? OK. Good job. Yeah. We silenced them. They didn't fall asleep. I think we did a good job. Thanks, guys. Thank you.